Hi, I'm the lone journalist for KRAZ TV. Yep, Doc Martin here with another book review. Now, this one has to be on the Zero Channel, adult related only. I'm sure that anybody would really read it, but it, it, it's a pretty hefty work. It's a seminal work, it's a definitive work. It is called The World Turned Upside Down. A History of the Chinese Cultural Revolution by Yang Zixing. Now, I know I'm going to butcher Chinese names, but I'm going to apologize in advance. He's also the author of Tombstone. I'll tell you about Tombstone here in a minute. A major political event and crucial turning point in the period in the history of People's Republic of China, the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution of 1966 through 1976 marked the zenith as well as the nadir of Mao Zedong's ultra-leftist politics. And the book is published by Farrar, Strauss, and Griot from New York. This book was uh, originally an 800,000 Chinese character book which means I guess it was so massive that that uh, it was translated and be still that thick. So Yang Zixing was born in 1940, joined the uh, Chinese Communist Party in 1964 and worked for the Xinhao News Agency from January 1968 until his retirement in 2001. For 15 years, he was deputy editor of Yunhong Qinggao Qinghui Chronicles of History, an official journal that regularly skirted censorship with articles on con controversial political topics. I bet he had to watch his P's and Q's here, didn't he? In 2015, he resigned under official pressure. For his groundbreaking work, Tombstone, Yang won Sweden's Stig Larsson's Prize for Journalistic Courage in 2015 and the Lewis M. Lyons Award for Conscience and Integrity in Journalism presented by the Neiman Fellows at Harvard University in 2016. Tombstone also won the Manhattan Institute 2013 Hayek Book Prize and the 2013 Lemkin Book Award from the Institute for the Study of Genocide. Wow. Yang Jing Zizeng lives in Beijing with his wife and two children. So he's still alive, thank God. I heard also it was in this book that it took, uh, well, it was uh, printed in, in, in Hong Kong and it was not allowed onto the, to the uh, mainland of China. I'm sure it's gotten over there. This is a book that goes so far in depth that, you know, you can rent. We got this book from the Tucson Public Library. Well, it takes a. You get three weeks. It takes all of three weeks if you really get in and read it all and all the little translation notes and everything. It takes a long time. In fact, it takes so long, probably, uh, that you'll have to recheck it out or. Or extend your uh, library loan for another three weeks. <laughs> it's a real work. It's hard to get through, but it relates to what's happening now. It's telling you and showing you, and this is from a guy that's been there and caught hell for it, <laughs> but uh, it's pertinent. You know, it's like the other book that we did with Resistance. Uh, on the Nazis and stuff. It's really relevant to why Yugoslavia got cut into so many uh, uh, provinces and what's happening there. And so this book reflects from those times that he talks about into why it is the way it is now. Uh, his first book on Tombstone was about the Great Famine. So... And that's a lot of people died over there. It says, uh, reacting in part to the Soviets, 
Union's revisionism. That's what was the biggest word around here, was called, which he regarded as a threat to the future of socialism. Mao mobilized the masses in a battle against what he called bourgeois forces within the Chinese Communist Party. So I guess it was real infighting now. This 10-year-old class struggle on a massive scale devastated traditional Chinese culture as well as the nation's economy. That's a real fact there. Following his groundbreaking and awarding award-winning history of the Great Famine, Tombstone, Yang Zhijing presents the only history of the Cultural Revolution by an independent scholar based in mainland China and makes a cultural contribution to understanding those, those years' lasting influence today. The world turned upside down puts every political incident, major and minor, of those ten years under extraordinary and withering scrutiny, <laughs> and arrives in English at a moment when temporary Chinese governance is leaning once more towards a highly centralized power structure and a Mao-style cult of personality. It sure is. So, it goes into many things. Uh, major events preceding lighting the fuse, removing obstructions, the May Conference, Liao Shaoqi's anti-rightist movement, and yet Mao is uh, in competition with that fellow. And then there's Zhao Enlai, Xi Jinping today. It says it arrives uh, with renowned attention to the Cultural Revolution at the 50th anniversary of its launch. And as China's President Xi Jinping takes steps to enhance centralized power and to establish a Mao type, a Mao style uh, cult of personality. It says the world turned upside down makes a crucial contribution to understanding the Cultural Revolution and its lasting influences today. So, uh, let's see. Yang, uh, Yang Zixing, Zhi, on the other hand, posits that the Cultural Revolution was a triangular game between Mao, the bureaucratic clique, and the rebel faction, and the bureaucratic clique of, of ultimately won. That's what really happened. Mao lost, and the rebel faction bore the consequences of the loss. Uh, Yang, who also wrote important works on China's reform and opening, asserts here, that reform and opening resulted from the ultimate victory of the bureaucratic clique, of which Ding Xiaoping and other reformers were key members and that were therefore essential to understand the mentality and practices of the clique in order to understand China as we know it today. That's who took over after Mao. So, it's an amazing, amazing story. I mean, there was the Red Guard, and they went around and caused a lot of the uh, denunciations and all, and it was just ugh, amazing. Once Mao, after he made some changes, allowed China's people to enjoy the freedom of association enshrined in the Constitution, <laughs> like theirs, mass organizations proliferated. At first, these organizations were confined to individual work units, but eventually it began to span work units and professions and become large-scale organizations that demolished the bureaucratic structure in the older order, bringing about the great chaos under heaven that Mao desired. I'm telling you that they were really against Westernism in a lot, big way. The thing with Mao is, is he came into power long before World War II, or was working on it. And in the early days of World War II, there was a struggle. The Japanese had held Nanking and all of that, and Mao had communist supporters, and they were uh, rebel bands, and they were on the move all the time. And then there was the nationalist government that came in after 
the Qing Dynasty or Qing, Qing Dynasty uh, ended in 1911 for the uh, nationalist government, and his name was uh, Sun Yat-sen, and there was a Chiang Kai-shek, and Madame uh, Chiang Kai-shek. She was a real mover in that uh, movement then. So there was infighting, all of that. And that's today why, uh, uh, well, Mao won, of course, but the people in the, the nationalist movement ran to Formosa or Taiwan. And that's why we have those uh, struggles there today, because it's two forms of idealism. And then, of course, uh, Hong Kong was mandated for in the 1800s since the Opium Wars and forced to, uh, and Macau was there centuries, uh, the Portuguese. But uh, this free state of Hong Kong uh, eventually got absorbed in, after the uh, 1997 uh, handover. So it's, it's, it's really, it's not convoluted, but it sure is intense and and some of it's where it went. So let me say one more thing here. It says, this is why most of Chinese wealthy are close to those in power as opposed to the vast impoverished uh, community. After more than 30 years of reform and opening, China's income disparity has reached an intolerable level. Social injustice and lack of upper mobility are causing people in the lower rungs of society to lose hope, intensifying conflict between the classes as manifested in mass protests and disturbances, which burgeoned from 8,700 instances in 1993 to more than 100,000 in 2008. Upwards of 75% of those mass instances have been a rights defense nature involving mostly peasants and uh, workers and peasants. Incredible. Incredible. So, I could go on and on about this book, the histories and the people involved and, and some of the movements, and everybody was displaced. And uh, he got rid of a lot of things from the older dynasties, and I don't know why he felt those were well, they disturbed the modern mind in his way and clung to old values that he wanted people to get rid of, but they weren't influenced by Western influences, but he got rid of everything. I mean to tell you, they smashed Ming China, or, uh, you know, vases and you know, tore up works and burned books and, and people were denounced and, and, and people were killed. I mean... Killed a lot of people were just beaten to death, and and they let this rabble rousing the the Red Guard, and then the Red Guards lost favor, and and so it went. It swung in both directions, and sometimes when it got too crazy, uh, wild stuff happened. So uh, read the book. It's going to take a while, but <laughs> I have a lot thinner. Wait till you see the little book for later. But this is an amazing story, and it is irrelevant to what's happening today. Thanks for watching KRAZ TV and, and watch all of our books and uh, reviews at the Zero Channel and at KRAZ TV. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.